Hey guys, we're talking about money destruction in a limited reserve framework. That's right, we're harking back to 2008 and all those years before 2008 when we had a limited reserve framework. Guys, we're teaching that because, hey, still the AP test and some college professors still want students to understand the limited reserve framework. So that's why we're teaching it, guys. And again, we're talking about money destruction. Specifically, we're gonna talk about money destruction that comes from a withdrawal. Now, I want you to understand from the top, guys, that the main reason we study withdrawal is to understand an open market system sale. That's right. A form of contractionary monetary policy under a limited reserve framework. And again, just so you know, we study a deposit, which is money expansion to understand an open market purchase. Of course, that's not what this video is about because this video is not about money expansion or money creation. It's about money contraction, money destruction, okay, that we get from a withdrawal. The big thing I want students to know when we study withdrawal, the main thing that's going on, guys, is the banking system is losing reserves. That's right. The banking system is losing reserves and under a limited reserve framework, that can can lead to money destruction okay so again we've got a withdrawal going on guys we've got Jane making withdrawal from bank one now hey guys when we're doing that limited reserve framework we need to understand balance sheets and that means we got to do those T charts right where you put an asset on the left and a liability on the right I'm gonna be doing both bank one and bank two so here we go again another T chart asset liability okay in this scenario guys i'm going to have jay make a withdrawal of one thousand dollars and the required reserve ratio is going to be ten percent now to get the maximum money destruction we're going to assume no banks have excess reserves during this scenario so let's get to it guys jane walks into the bank and says i'd like to make a withdrawal of one thousand dollars the bank is gonna hand her $1,000 in currency and she's gonna walk out of that bank with that currency. And that currency is gonna go from being bank reserves when it was in the bank's possession to currency in circulation. Again, no change in the monetary base, but the banks are losing reserves. The composition of the monetary base is changing, guys. Bank reserves are going down, currency in circulation going up. But guys, when those banks lose those reserves, there's a possibility of money destruction, as you'll see. So let's get the recording on the balance sheet of this transaction, okay? asset reserves right banks are losing reserves how much they're losing one thousand dollars because that was the withdrawal amount liability demand deposit jane this is basically her checking account demand deposit is another term for checking accounts minus one thousand dollars now let's go ahead and also record this on jane's balance sheet or t-chart however you want to call it guys because we can see some things that might help us later on in the problem number one assets what we're going to do here is we're going to say assets demand deposits hey her checking account is going down by one thousand dollars however assets currency the currency she now has in her possession went up by one thousand dollars one of the reasons i like to show that is that hey the money supply is not changing straight from the draw okay specifically from the withdrawal or maybe we could say immediately from the withdrawal no change in the money supply okay demand deposits part of the money supply is going down but currency in circulation another part of the money supply is going up the money supply or m1 guys is currency in circulation demand deposits and now starting 2002 or 2022 savings accounts so currency in circulation demand deposits and savings accounts I'm not going to focus much on savings accounts in this video guys money supply the main thing to look at currency in circulation and demand deposits okay currency in circulation went up demand deposits down no change immediately in the money supply from the withdrawal this is what I like to call is T1, transaction one, in this particular scenario where the scenario is Jane makes a withdrawal of $1,000, okay? This is T1 from that. Once you've done T1, you can answer both of these questions, which are two of the big eight questions that we need to be able to answer for every scenario that is out there. And if you're wondering, what are those scenarios? It's somebody makes a deposit, that's a scenario of some amount of money. Open market purchase, again, another scenario somebody makes a withdrawal that's what we're doing okay and an open market sale there's another scenario so there's four major types of scenarios out there this is the one where somebody's making a withdrawal and when you're asked for any of the or when you encounter any of these scenarios there's eight possible questions these first two questions only have to do with t1 because they're about immediate changes immediate changes said means it has to have happened in transaction one okay so was there an immediate change in monetary base we've already answered that absolutely not guys right the fed did not destroy reserves okay nor did they create reserves if the fed doesn't take an active role the monetary base is not changing because the fed is the only entity that really changes the monetary 
base. They're the stewards of the monetary base. So me to change the monetary base? No. Compositional change? Yes. Bank reserves went down, currency and circulation went up. Those are the two components of the monetary base. Was there an immediate change in the money supply? Again, no, we've already answered that right. Remember, her current, uh, sorry, her demand deposit or checking account went down by 1,000, but her currency that she has went up by 1,000. Her ability to buy goods and services has not changed, guys. She can still buy $1,000 worth of goods and services. Used to be she used demand deposit or her checking account. Now she can use that currency, no change in the money supply. So a big no and no from a withdrawal. But now we got to get to T2. And by the way, guys, so important for every scenario we have, remember we have four major scenarios, guys. For every scenario we have, T2 is either going to be a loan or the repayment of a loan. Loans create money, repayments of loans destroy money. This is about the destruction of money because it's coming from withdrawal. Banks are losing reserves. So guys, we're going to have the repayment of a loan. But I got to get there, right? It needs a little bit of work for us to understand that. So hitting on back to here, guys. Remember, assume no banks have excess reserves. That means bank one did not have excess reserves. They lost reserves. That means they are now deficient in reserves. Now, what does a bank do when they become deficient in reserves? It is so important for us to understand at least these first two steps, guys. Number one, they go to the federal funds market. That's right, you go to the federal funds market. That's where interbank lending happens and you try to borrow reserves from another bank. But since no banks have excess reserves, they're not gonna be able to borrow any money from the federal funds market. So next, bank one is gonna to head to the discount window. That's right, you can borrow reserves straight from the Fed. You can borrow reserves from the Fed through the discount window. But since we're studying a withdrawal to understand an open market sale, a situation where they're trying to contract the money supply, we're gonna assume the Fed is gonna say, no, we're not gonna lend you any reserves, okay? So that's right, we're assuming they're shutting the discount window. No discount window, you can't get those reserves from there. The third option is they could sell an asset like a bond or some, like a, some type of loan, like a mortgage or a car loan to another bank. But again, no banks have excess reserves, so no banks are looking out there to buy those assets. So we're going to assume that they can't do that either. So now they're on to option four. Again, the options were federal funds market, then the discount window, sell an asset. Now we're on to option four. They're going to have to call in a loan. That's right. Some of the loans that they have made are callable. They can call them back in at any time. So they're going to call our friend Ed. Okay, I just made up that, just a person. They're going to call a person that has a loan with them. So Bank One is going to call this person Ed, who has a loan with him. Now, just to keep it nice and simple and clean on my balance sheets, I'm going to assume that Ed banks at Bank Two. Now, what does that mean? It means his checking account is at Bank Two, but he's taking a loan from Bank One, and that's actually not a rare thing. That's actually super common that you might have a checking account at one bank and a loan from another bank. Okay, so no big deal. Ed's checking account is at Bank Two. Bank One is is calling up Ed and saying, hey, Ed, I'm kind of pointing up, I'm assuming Ed's like out here somewhere, okay? So anyhow, Bank One is calling up Ed saying, hey, you need to repay some of your loan. We need you to repay some of your loan. The question is how much of your loan, okay? So stay close, pay close attention to this. How much is Bank One now deficient? If your answer is $1,000, you're kind of tracking with me, you're wrong, but you're kind of tracking with me, which is a good thing. They had no excess reserves, right? No excess reserves. Bank One had no excess reserves. They lost a thousand in reserves. So if you want to say, hey, they're a thousand dollars deficient, not a bad answer at all, but you're wrong. And why are you wrong? Because demand deposits went down by $1,000. And we need to understand, guys, that the required reserve ratio, which is 10% in this problem, required reserve ratio is the percent of demand deposits a bank must hold in reserves. It's the percent of demand deposits a bank must hold in reserves. So if their demand deposits went down by 1,000, 10% times 1,000 is 100, they're required to hold 100 less than they used to be required to hold. Now they've lost 1,000, but they're required to hold 100 less than they used to be required to, so they are deficient by 900, okay? Not by 1,000, but by 900, because their demand deposits went down by 1,000, they're required to hold 100 less than they used to be required to hold. So now we know how much of a loan they're gonna call in. They're gonna call Ed and say, I need you to pay back $900 because that's how much they are deficient. Now let's record that, okay? So asset, all right, loan, which is Ed, Ed's loan is going down by $900, right? Next, asset, reserves. This is why they're calling in a loan is to get reserves plus $900. Now we are not done yet with 
T2, because again, Ed banks at bank two, so this check is going to get cleared. So I'm heading over here, T2, continuing with T2 on bank two, where Ed banks, right? Assets, reserves, minus 900, demand deposits, liability demand deposits, Ed, again, Ed, minus 900. Hundred, okay. When they get this check and see that Ed wrote a check, they're going to deduct his checking account by 900s. But yes, they lost reserves. Who did they lose reserves to? Bank one. So what happened that is super important in T2? Money was destroyed. Okay. What do you mean money was destroyed? Guys, when loans are repaid, money is destroyed. If we looked at Ed's balance sheet, guys, now I'm not gonna draw it, so just kind of listen closely. If we look at Ed's balance sheet, it would now say liability loans minus 900, asset demand deposit minus 900. So in this case, what happened? Ed lost some money out of his checking account and that's it. No currency in circulation came his way. It's not like that withdrawal, right? Where demand deposits went down, but currency went up. In this situation, his loan went down and his demand deposits went down. Guys, his ability to buy goods and services went down by $900, guys. That's right, money was destroyed. When we repay loans, money is destroyed. When we make loans, money is created. When we repay loans, money is destroyed. You can see it by Ed's checking account or demand deposit going down. All right, with all that said, guys, we are ready for the last six questions of the big eight. Here's the big two, or the first two of the big eight. Here's the next six. For the next six, guys, you can look at T1 or start at T1, and if you have to, you can head on to T2. So start here, move on to here. Here's the first question, guys. What was the initial change in, for this first question, we don't really need this word max, okay? Initial change in demand deposits. Well, we take a look. Oh, there it is. That's my initial, my first change in demand deposit, minus 1,000. So I put minus 1,000 times the money multiplier, which is the inverse of the required reserve ratio, one over 0.1, which is 10. So again, minus 1,000 times 10, minus 10,000. So the maximum change in demand deposits is gonna be minus 10,000. Next question, okay? This time I need the word max. What was the maximum initial change in bank lending? What was the maximum initial change in bank lending? In this one, I don't see a loan in T1, so I move on to T2. Oh, there's my first, my initial, my first loan, minus $900, minus $900, money multiplier 10, minus 9,000, the maximum change in bank lending, minus 9,000. The next question is, what is the maximum initial change in? Remember, maximum initial change in the money supply. Oh, that's when that loan was repaid and we saw money get destroyed. How much money? $900 getting destroyed. So that repayment of that loan was our initial change. And the maximum initial change we could get of this was what we got, which was minus 900. So minus 900 times 10, minus 9,000. Again, eight questions we need to answer for any scenario we encounter. And what are those scenarios? That is somebody makes a deposit, that's a scenario. Open market purchase, that's a scenario. This is a withdrawal, somebody makes a withdrawal. That's what we had going on right here in this video. And the last one, an open market sale, which I'm gonna have a video on very shortly. This again was somebody makes a withdrawal, eight questions. These two, we can answer right when we do T1. And we should answer right when we do T1. If they didn't happen in T1, there was no immediate change, okay? For this one, where we have the maximum initial or initial, if you will, changes in these, and then the maximum changes in these, we can look at T1 originally, but if we don't have anything in T1, move on to T2. This was a withdrawal pulling reserves out of the banking system, which led to money destruction, which led to uh, banks calling in loans. And when they call in those loans and people have to repay loans, money gets destroyed. Hope that made sense to you. We'll see you in the next video.